Welcome back to Tetracan Super Mono Block. This is going to be the first in a series of videos tearing down a Tascam Porta Studio 424. So um, I am acting as your scout and guinea pig should you have one of these and need to take it apart to do any maintenance, calibration, servicing or repair. We'll be taking off all the knobs, taking out the transport, getting at the belts, removing the printed circuit boards. Is there anything you need to do if you've got some soldering or adjusting or tinkering or modding or whatever it is you've got to do. So the first thing to do is to lay this on its front on a soft surface. I've got a pillow here. Then there's going to be two kinds of screw that you remove. One kind is just over a centimetre long. Wide ferrule, sort of anodized black in colour. You'll find those screws in the location where there's red tape. One, two, three, four, five places. And then there's an additional five screws corresponding to these five holes. Note that this hole here, that's a recess for a plastic mounting post, there's no screw in it. And the screws that are in those five holes are longer, um, they've got a plain shank and then a longer area with the ferrules. Um, tip it forward from the front and it's going to open up like a book, like that. Uh, before we go ahead and remove this transport, Something for you to know is that I've already been in here and these types of connectors are used for one, two, three, four, five ribbon connectors. So I guess when those wires are fresh, the exposed wires of the ribbon wire will just push into there and click very easily. You push down a plastic cap over the top and that stays in place. I've found to my detriment that if you remove those, they're really difficult to get back in. So on this model, I don't know if you can see, but I've actually installed JSTXH plugs. It's really the same sort of connector that we're going to see on the magnetic heads and everything. You don't need to do that, but I would recommend that you don't take the caps off the original connectors and pull these ribbon cables out. So this white plug here is the erase cable. The cables are thin, so I would dislodge that with a pair of pliers rather than using the strength of the cables themselves. And then the records head splits in one, two, three, four separate plugs. The headers themselves aren't coloured to match, um, but they are noted on the board. So that says WHD for short for white. This one says red on it. This one says BLK for black, YEL for yellow for this one here. So you shouldn't have too much trouble on reassembly putting the wrong cable into the wrong header. Uh, the way this design works, four out of those five longer screws that we removed from the back are actually passing through these posts and uh, screwing into recesses on this side. So there are no screws to remove. That's going to lift out. You can see that there are three white plugs. Those are strong enough. You can just pull them out by the wires. And finally, there are two cables coming down here. At that point, the transport and the mechanical counter are completely separate. Don't know if you noticed there, the flywheel had fallen out. I don't know if you can see that there's a little, you probably hear me picking at it, there's a little recess there. Depending on the design, you'll either have a plastic clip or an e-clip there. If you've lost the clip, you can get you know, a little component box of that sort with you know, eight to ten different sizes of e-clip that will almost certainly include the correct size that you'll need to hold that on. Looks like a very easy belt change. You wouldn't actually need to remove a plate or any screws or anything to change that. You could just hook the belt around that pulley then over the flywheel. And we've got one shorter belt here for the counter mechanism. With this kind of pinch roller, you can just put a flathead screwdriver in there and pop it out and slot in your replacement. So some time has elapsed and the flywheel is no longer dropping. But turning freely. Hopefully you can see that there is an e-clip there with a white nylon washer below it. And to be a little more clear, these are the selection boxes that I was talking about. These may be costing like £6 each from eBay. Probably a lot less if I bought from AliExpress. So it's this size here, what, 2.5 the washer. They come out a little bit thicker than I needed them. Push them around on a 
bit of sandpaper like that, then they become thin enough. And then it was this size, the two millimeter e-clip that I've put on there. And I've sprayed a little bit of silicone lubricant there, just so it doesn't contribute to wearing flutter or anything. Grab one of these isopropyl swabs. <laughs> Make sure that no silicon grease on the part of the calf sun that's going to be in contact with the tape. Take that opportunity and give the heads a wipe. One of the other things to say about that process was I think I had a lump of this uh, blue tack, white tack, whatever, underneath so that the flywheel didn't drop while I was applying the washer and the e clip. And the e clip, it's just a matter of getting the needle nose pliers pushing it into the groove slightly and then holding it there with your thumb and forefinger. And Pushing on all the way till it clicks, and then I would, you know, just tighten it on the outside like that. Now that puts me in a position to actually demonstrate putting these belts on. So these are the crusty old ones, I'll talk about the exact sizes in a minute. Yeah, just hook one end over this pulley. There's going to be a little bit of fiddling involved with this, so presumably I will cut the video here at the point where I've got that hooked, and then. Around flying you. That's that one fitted. <laughs> Got blue tack stuck there. And um, the counter is a little bit easier. Get onto this pulley behind the counter. Hold that on the finger, stretch it. And then it goes onto the pulley below this hexagonal bit on this take up reel. So those are the old belts that I put on and I will be replacing them. If I just show you this one, it's I mean it'll probably work kind of crusty uh, you really want these to have a good oval shape without any kinks but it's got a little bit of a kink to it and it feels kind of crispy but uh, that capstan belt is flat and 105 millimeters of folded length counter belt it's squared section and it's 70 millimeters in folded length I get these kind of belts from multi-packs off eBay that are very cheap and um, the flat belts here in the UK, we've been getting them from gbaudio.com. Uh, I'm not saying that's the only place you can get them. They're probably alternatives, but people do tend to ask me where I get my belts, and that is where. If I was in the United States, then I'd be looking at West Coast belts, Mars, I know make belts. It's probably other suppliers. And uh, the reason I use folded length rather than, you know, the sign for circumference and giving you, like, radius and a lot of information about these is, you know, I'm pitching this channel towards people who really don't, do much science stuff. If you're like heavy in the maths, you can easily derive um, the other measurements that you want from the circumference which you would obtain by doubling the folded length. Presumably I'm ending the video here, so in the next section we will start to remove the printed circuit boards from the plastic case of the 424, as you might need to do if you're going to do some cleaning, some soldering and that kind of thing. See you then.